Welcome to the Boise Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. I'm the Reverend Sarah Lawall. It is my great honor to serve this beloved community. We are a justice-seeking, spiritually diverse religious community with one great aim, to grow in love. Love for neighbor, love for ourselves, and love for our planet. <laughs> Happy Pride, friends! It is. This weekend marks the start of Pride Month, and although in Boise we celebrate with our big festival in September, today we honor Pride during this month of June, which commemorates the early beginnings of Pride that grew out of the Stonewall riots and the rebellion in New York City in 1969. Pride celebrates the beautiful rainbow spectrum of sexual orientation and gender identity, our LGBTQIA2S plus community, owning the pride instead of shame in identity, in the beautiful diversity of our human beingness and our expression. And pride also reminds us of our commitment as Unitarian Universalists to the values of inherent worth and dignity for all people and of our pursuit for justice equality, and human rights for all people. I had the great honor of representing this congregation last night in the Drag is Not a Crime fashion show, where I got to walk the runway. I'm sporting my beautiful shirt here, bedazzled by our friend Bonnie Violet, who even bedazzled a clerical collar on the t-shirt for me. <laughs> It was a delightful moment that this church was one of the sponsors of the event, but what was really extraordinary is that we were one of four other faith communities who were sponsoring this drag event that, rep that raised money for the ACLU Legal Defense Fund, where each of the drag queens were invited to create an outfit that represented an issue of justice that they were passionate about. The outfits were amazing. The celebration was amazing. It was just a really beautiful way to kick off Pride Month. So thank you all for being part of that Pride family and the family of this community supporting that work. Let's take a moment to welcome our online community, those joining us on Zoom. Good morning. We're so glad you're with us. You have an opportunity, we have an opportunity to see you here on our screens. We invite you to turn your cameras on so that we can welcome you this morning. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning, Edith and Anne Marie and Anne. And I see my beautiful family, Michael and Juniper. Good morning. And Chuck Tate and Jane Zornick and Sandy Cruz. Thank you all for joining us, reminding us that we worship together as one beloved community beyond the walls of this fellowship. <laughs> A special welcome to our newcomers, to those of you that are joining us for the first or second time. We know it takes a lot of courage to check out a new community, and we're so glad you've chosen us this morning. We invite you to introduce yourselves to us either after the service, during our hospitality time and potluck today, or online in the chat so that we can warmly welcome you and we can keep you connected with all that is happening in our fellowship. And we invite you to fill out our newcomer forms as well, both in the entryways, and we'll post a link online. Our inquirer series, the series of sessions designed to introduce newcomers to Unitarian Universalism and this fellowship begins today after all of the hubbub. So you are invited, any of you, to come on down to the uh, North Wing at the end there and join us in the, those series of sessions. And today, after many years of a hiatus uh, due to the pandemic and forgetting everything we ever did, we are having one of our annual fire drills. Most exciting time. From our safety team, uh, here is Ali Gooding to give a, a little announcement about what you can expect and what we would like you to do. I brought a hat, but it's too small. Oh, dear. <laughs> so I'll put it here. <laughs> Good reason. You got it? Yep. So, good morning. Good morning. 
I'm Allie Gooding, and I'm a member of the Booth Safety Preparedness Committee. And then, oh, there sorry. You are. There you are. So I'm a member of the Booth Safety Preparedness Committee. Doesn't that sound ominous? <laughs> one small way we live our commitment to care for one another is to practice being safe in the event of a fire. Uh, at least once a year, we conduct a fire evacuation practice, formerly known as a drill. Uh, and this drill will occur today at the conclusion of the service. Uh, the alarm will sound. It will be loud and it will be annoying. It is meant to motivate you to leave the building. <laughs> Um, I ask that you exit the building in an orderly fashion by the closest exit as quickly as you can, being aware that the closest exit may be behind you. <laughs> Please assist others who may be confused or challenged. Um, make your way to the lawn at the end of the south parking lot um, near the playhouse, okay? Some people are directionally challenged, that's south, okay? Children and youth in RE classrooms will be brought to this location by their teachers. So parents, you will pick up your children from the teachers near the playhouse, okay? Uh, do not stand right in front of the entrance doors in the event that this was a real fire emergency. That's where the fire engines and other emergency vehicles would park. Okay? I got more. Parents with children in the nursery, you should go to the nursery first to pick up your children before leaving the building and then proceed to the gathering spot. And where is that spot? Okay, good. Um, during the drill, there will be three leaders monitoring our progress, so no one is left behind. These people are Shereen Watson, um, the celebrant, the AV coordinator, Michael Liu, um, the Director of Family Ministries, Emily Jim Emerson Page, and the Reverend Sarah Lamal may just be helping to make sure everybody gets out of here. When the building is clear and all the children have reunited with their parents, the fire drill coordinator, and Rob, where are you? So why don't you stand, stand up? That's Rob Han. He's our, our fire drill coordinator, okay? Um, he will signal when the drill has ended and those nasty alarms will be deactivated and you can return to the building, okay? The courtyard and the wing doors will automatically lock when closed. These doors should not be propped open. Remember, we're practicing that there's a fire, okay? And if you prop open the wing doors, that creates a chimney that would spread a fire. So let those doors close. Um, you can re-enter the building by the north and, what's it? North <laughs> and south wing doors, entry doors, okay? Enjoy your coffee or your beverage of choice, treats, and conversation after returning to the building. A heartfelt thanks from the Safety Committee for your cooperation. Thank you, Paul. I have just a few uh, addendums to this, today is a multi-generational service. Our children and youth are together in the space. Many of you are already back there with Jem on our playground, at our playground. So those of you that are there, Jem will help you make your way outside and you can reunite with your parents at the meeting spot 
or parents, if you want to go to your child and walk out your choice, just know that we're all together in the building this morning. And then because we have our bridging ritual today, once our fire drill is complete and the annoying alarm is turned off, I'll invite us all to make our way to the little bridge where we will have our outdoor bridging ritual for our bridging seniors today. So much is happening today. It's a busy day. So we're going to gather and center ourselves by lighting our flaming chalice. At this hour in small towns and big cities in ornate sanctuaries, many of our sibling Unitarian Universalists are also lighting a flaming chalice, the symbol of our faith, a beacon of hope, love, and justice, reminding us that we are a part of this great community of faith. We invite a young person to light the chalice to remind us of our collective hope for the future we can build together. As Tony comes up to help me light the chalice here in the sanctuary, I invite those of you on Zoom to light a chalice or a candle nearby if you have one and share in the chat where it is you have lit your chalice this morning. Come on down. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Come on down. Join me in congratulating first time chalice lighter Tony. Tony is joined here at our church by his grandmother, Kathy. Uh, Tony loves to spend his time playing basketball video games and has recently acquired his own fly fishing rod and is a big fan of fly Ooh, fishing. Nice. If you would like to chat with Tony after the service about any of these interests, you are more than welcome to. Tony, here is your first time at Chalice Lighter Pin. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great job, Tony. Thank you so much. I invite us all to rise in body or spirit and join together in blessing one another with song as we sing, Wake Now My Senses, verses 1 through 3. As we gather together, we acknowledge that the land upon which our church and homes exist 
is the ancestral land stolen from the people of the Shoshone Bannock, the Shoshone Paiute, Coeur d'Alene, Kootenai, and Nez Perce nations, along with many other tribes whose names have been lost in history. We acknowledge that our presence here today is founded upon the exclusions and erasures of many indigenous peoples. With this acknowledgement, we wish to demonstrate our ongoing commitment to the work of dismantling the legacies of settler colonialism. We honor Indigenous peoples' connection to the land and support their right to sovereignty. Our spiritual theme for this month of June, we begin a new theme following the book An Altar in the World by Barbara Brown Taylor. This month's theme is benediction, the practice of pronouncing blessings. As Unitarian Universalists, we recognize many paths to the holy. And so a blessing can come from anyone, anywhere, anytime. Each of us holds the power to pronounce blessings to honor and celebrate that divine spark that lives within us, around us, and beyond us. Catholic mystic and poet John O'Donohue writes, a blessing is a circle of light drawn around us to protect, heal, and strengthen. Life is a constant flow of emergence. The beauty of blessing is its belief that it can affect what unfolds. Today, we have many blessings to pronounce as we celebrate our annual flower communion service, honoring the beauty in our diversity and recognize the rite of passage of some of our high school graduates with our traditional bridging ritual. So as we enter into this time of worship, I invite us all to take a breath together. Fill your body with breath. Breathe, knowing that our breath connects us, connects us to our bodies, to one another, and to our planet. Our breath offers us an opportunity for stillness, to tune in to our spiritual center, to listen deeply to our heart's own longing. Thou art the song of my heart in the morning. Thou art the dawn of truth in my soul. Thou art the dew of the roses adorning. Thou art the woven whole. Thine is the grace to be steadfast in danger. Thine is the peace that none can destroy. Thine is the face of the need-riven stranger. Thine are the wings of joy. Thou art the deep to the deep in me calling. Thou art a lamp where my feet shall tread. Thy way is steep past the peril of falling. Thou art my daily bread. Thine be the praise of my spirit uplifted. Thou art the sea to each flowing stream. Thine be the days that are gathered and sifted. Thou art the deathless dream.
Our call to worship this morning is from Joan Javier Duval. You are beloved and welcome here. Whether tears have fallen from your eyes this past week or gleeful laughter has spilled out of your smiling mouth, you are beloved and welcome here. Whether you are feeling brave or brokenhearted, defiant or defeated, fearsome or fearful, you are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you have untold stories deep, buried deep inside or stories that have been forced beyond the edges of comfort, you are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you have made promises, broken promises, or are renewing your promises, you are beloved and you are welcome here. Whatever is on your heart, however it is with your soul in this moment, you are beloved and you are welcome here. In this space of welcome and acceptance, commitment and recommitment of covenant and connection, come, let us worship together. I would like to invite all our friends on the playground and other young people that are out there to come on down for our Time for All Ages this morning. Thanks, Cambria. <laughs> Love it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to tell you the story of the very first flower communion ceremony. And we've told this story before over the years, but I think it's one of those stories that is an important tradition for us as Unitarian Universalists to retell over and over again, to claim it is the story of our own. We do a lot of communion services together, and this one is very uniquely Unitarian, and it is part of our history. So it makes this flower ceremony particularly special. So how many of you know where Czechoslovakia is? Have you heard of it before? It's in, it's in Europe, in Eastern Europe, far, far away. So I want you to imagine, but you're going to get some pictures so you don't have to imagine it all in your mind. In the city of Prague, in the land of Czechoslovakia, in the year 1923, <coughs> there was a Unitarian church. And it was a new Unitarian church, and it had been started by the reverends Norbert Chopik and his wife Maya Chopik and daughter Bodana. And they helped each other build this Unitarian church and the whole movement of Unitarianism in Czechoslovakia at the time. They found a medieval palace. That's pretty cool. We don't have those here, but that's pretty cool. They found a medieval palace to renovate for where they would have their church meetings together. And in just 20 years of the church's existence, it grew to be one of the largest in the world with over 3,000 members. And more than 8,000 Czechs called themselves Unitarians. That's just wild to conceive of, isn't it? Could you imagine being in a church with 3,000 people? I can't imagine that. But I guess a medieval palace can hold 3,000 people pretty well, so that's good. But in the beginning, that medieval palace, it didn't really look a whole lot like a church. It was pretty bare. It had no bells, no church spire, no stained glass windows, no wood carvings or beautiful tapestries or stone carvings, no flowers, no candles, nada, nothing. It was very plain and very simple. And Reverend Chopek wanted to find a ritual that would help bind his community together and bring them closer together, but also one that would honor the very variety of beliefs that existed in his congregation because his congregation had people that had been Catholics, and people that had been Protestants, and people that had been Jews, and people that had even been atheists at the time, which we didn't really talk about a lot in the 1920s, but there were a lot of atheists in Europe at the time, just like our UU congregations today. 
And so Reverend Chopik knew that a traditional Christian communion ceremony, have you all heard of the Christian communion ceremony? Do you know what's in that typically, what they use in a Christian communion ceremony? No, why would you? What? No, that's ours. <laughs> they use bread and wine. Yeah, you've heard, now, now it rings the bell. Yeah, they use bread and wine, but he knew that wasn't going to work for his congregation because not everybody came from that background and people had left those faith traditions. And his church, like ours, it had so many different beliefs and people believed different things. So he decided one day to just go for a walk to try to think about this. And it was springtime in Prague. And it had, was just after a rain and he's moving through the city and traveling through the countryside in Czechoslovakia, and the flowers are blooming. And it is green, and it is beautiful, and the sky is blue, and the sun is shining. And so he, this idea pops into his head, simple and clear, and he goes back to his congregation and tells them that the next Sunday he wants them each to bring a flower, or a budding branch, or a twig even. And every person was to bring one. And of course, you know, being the Unitarians they are, they had a lot of questions. What kind of flower? What color should it be? They were, and he said, whatever you want. You choose the flower that you love. Choose the thing that represents you. Choose something that speaks to you. It doesn't matter. And so then on the next Sunday, which happened to be the first day of summer, the people came with flowers of all different shapes and sizes and all different colors of the rainbow. Can you imagine 3,000 flowers? Wouldn't that be spectacular to watch? I can imagine my allergies. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Big cavernous space, so hopefully it wasn't too much. But there were ro red roses and yellow daisies and orange poppies and green leaves and bluebells and dark delphiniums and purple pansies and white lilies. Every color you could imagine, all the colors, and the flowers filled all the vases, and their church wasn't so plain and simple anymore. And it became a ritual that they did every single year uh, around that same time of year as a community. And Reverend Chopek spoke to the people, and these are the words that he said to them. He said, we are like these flowers different colors and different shapes and different sizes, each needing different kinds of care, but each beautiful, each important, each special in its own way. Together, we create the beautiful bouquet that is this community. And he said our common bouquet wouldn't be the same without the unique addition of each individual flower, and thus it is with our church community. It would not be the same without each and every one of us. And that's what this ceremony represents today. So I would like to invite your help in helping us build our flower communion altar. And if you would please go through our congregation and collect the flowers of the people, all of the different beautiful flowers that brought today. And if you brought your own, go grab your own. You might have to take a couple trips and come up and let's build this altar together. So friends, if you have a flower out there that you brought, you can hold it up for our young people. If you forgot a flower, it's okay. We have vases over there. You can choose one that you like and bring it back to your seat and offer it up to a young person. And young people, yes, multiple trips. You don't have to run. We have time for this. Look at those gorgeous flowers. Are there more out there? Go out and look. 
look and see if there's, oh, there's a whole bunch on this side. More flowers, more flowers. Go get some more flowers. Good job, this flower communion altar is coming to life. Tony, do you want to get some more flowers? Amazing. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit here. Beautiful job. Look at this. This is so gorgeous. I feel like more and more flowers every year we get it's almost 3,000. <laughs> so close. Thank you all for your contributions, those that came from your gardens, those that maybe you picked by the side of the road, or maybe that you just picked when you got here because you remembered. <laughs> Isn't it lovely to have flowers on the premises that we can use to build our altar of beauty? I want to finish telling you a little bit about Reverend Chopek as we have built this altar together in this ceremony that he did every year. He became an outspoken voice for Unitarianism during World War II when lots of people were being silenced and persecuted for speaking out for freedom, for basic freedom, for religious freedom in particular. And he and one of his daughters was at, were actually arrested and they were sent to a concentration camp where he died. But here, I just discovered this little tidbit of this story just this year and I've been doing this a long time. And what I learned was that when he, he was in Dachau, one of the concentration camps, and when he was in Dachau, he held a flower communion ceremony in the camp. So even under the terrible conditions of the concentration camp, he, with his fellow prisoners, finding whatever flowers, weeds, twigs, whatever they could at the camp, they built their own flower communion altar and that testified together to the beauty that was larger than themselves, to a love and a beauty that would outlive them. And his wife, Maya, ended up coming to the United States. And so she was the one to introduce the flower ceremony here to Unitarians in this country. And it caught on very quickly. And so this ritual is celebrated by Unitarian Universalists across the country at more or less this time of year from like Easter through summer. 
And we love the way that it brings the colorful beauty of our earth into our midst, and it reminds us of the power of community, of what it means to be together despite all the forces that try to divide us and conspire to, against us. And as a reminder, each of these flowers, just like Reverend Chopik said, is a part of our community's beauty and our community's purpose. So remember the question from last week and the story from a few weeks ago? <coughs> Listen to the beauty, my friends. Listen for the beauty. It's right here in front of us. This flower communion ceremony reminds us that we can and must work to shift our world toward greater peace, greater equity, greater justice and sustainability, and that we can and we must help liberate others. These flowers literally represent fighting fascism. So fighting fascism, flower communion ceremony we do every year. It's kind of great. And so Reverend Chopek would offer a blessing, a consecration of the flowers when they were brought up. And these are his words. This is his blessing consecration of the flowers. Infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us, amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts, to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of the most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship, but may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn together. So if you want to go back to the playground or go back to your seat or just stand right here and sing your choice, I invite us all to rise in body or spirit and sing together the words of Reverend Chopek in hymn number eight, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit. Such a beautiful song. This flower altar has some very special, special flowers on it today over here. It's hard to see them amidst the mass of beautiful color, rainbow roses, specifically chosen to honor our bridging youth. Those youth that have graduated from high school and are moving into young adulthood. And to celebrate these youth today on flower communion feels like one of, that's one of our most beloved and beautiful historically UU rituals. Feels like the exact right time, reminding us that 
Our community would not be the same without each of you graduates. Today, we're honoring our high school graduates, Ronnie Affalter, Sasha Falcone, Annabelle Jenkins, and Juniper Lawal. The first ever bridging ceremony was held in Spokane in 1995, and it became quickly a hallmark of the liturgical year, as most congregations across the country mark this occasion with their own bridging ceremony. It's an important way that we as a congregation can celebrate the accomplishments of our young people and the amazing human beings they have become. And we haven't had a full in-person bridging ritual since before the pandemic. So this is a sweet moment to be able to bring this back to this community today. And it feels especially sweet for me. Not only is my own child a part of this cohort of gradu graduates, but this was the last group of Boston Bounders that I had the great honor of hanging out with in Boston, exploring our UU and national history together back in 2019, which seems like a lifetime ago. And so what a joy it is to be able to share all together today. To offer our thanks, to offer their thanks, a couple of our Bridgers want to share some of themselves and their hearts with you. A couple of them have written a short reflection, and so I'd like to start by inviting Ronnie Affolter to come up. Sort of a part of my reflection, I just wanted to talk about how much this community has helped me really just be myself and be unapologetically, unapologetically myself and truly in school just allow myself to pursue what I wanted to and not be too concerned about everyone around me and how they would be affected by me trying to plan out my future, which is something I really learned to do at the church as well as exploring during the pre-work for my Boston Bounders, exploring my faith and really deciding what I believed in, which allows me to articulate my beliefs very well when I'm talking to other people. So. Uh, so Ronnie, what is next for you? Do you know what's next for you? Um, I'm going to be going to CWI next. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Are you exploring or do you have a focus you want to? No, do? I'm going to be okay. continuing in networking cybersecurity. Very cool. Do you have a favorite memory of this place besides Boston? <laughs> I, I've loved the flower communions every year. That's my favorite service. So I'm really happy that my bridging ceremony is on flower communion. I think you're not alone. I think this needs to be the new tradition now. <laughs> I've heard this for more than one of you. Thank you so much and congratulations. <laughs> if you could sit in the front row, because then I'll bring you back up when you're done. Uh, Sasha Falcone is recovering from some dental work and couldn't be here this morning, is not feeling well. But I also wanted to just honor her with the photos that we have from folks. I went through my Boston photos and pulled a few of a couple of you and then your parents sent in some pictures. But also here to say just a couple words on Sasha's behalf is her dad, Dave, who went with us to Boston. Thanks. So have you ever heard the term sharenting? <laughs> so that's what I'm about to do. My daughter has kindly asked me to not share anything here today. So <laughs> Sasha, please forgive me. I will oh. keep it short. Sasha just graduated from Bora High, cum laude. She will be attending Portland State University studying community development. I'm so proud of her. Go Vikings. <laughs> And Sasha, hope this picture of you at the fountain was, is one of my favorites of all time. When the kids just ran through the fountain, got soaking wet, and it was amazing. We hope that you will watch on YouTube, and we love you. And the same for Juniper Lawal, who is watching online, who is not here this morning. We love you, too. And I have no pictures of you. You're welcome. <laughs> but we celebrate you nonetheless. And now I'd like to invite up Annabelle Jenkins. Hi friends. 
Um, nobody gave me a character limit on my reflection, and that, in hindsight, might have been a mistake. So we're going to be Not here. a mistake. <laughs> 18 years ago, my parents planted a tree in the corner of our backyard. It was our own little tradition. Each child gets a tree after they're born. My older sisters had vivid magenta flowers in the spring that hid prickly thorns if you got too close. <laughs> My little brother's apple tree grew impressively round apples with flavors deep and tart. And my little sister's peach tree was ever ambitious, bows so heavy with fruit that the tiny trunk and branches buckled against the weight and brushed against the lawn. <laughs> then my cherry tree, a light and pale bloom each March and ripe with rich red fruit that I was constantly defending against birds in search of a little sweet treat. Mm. So, all right, birds, I get it. You steal my berries. I drink coffee with way too much sugar. We all have our guilty pleasures. <laughs> when I stood in this sanctuary with a line of other youth and was dedicated to this community, I left clutching a white rose. Instead of trying to prolong its vitality in a vase of water, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I placed it at the trunk of my beloved cherry tree with the thought that, yes, it would rot, but it would go straight into the soil and make my tree stronger. Something about that action felt so sacred to me in a way I couldn't quite identify as a seven-year-old, but given that I've had 11 years to mull it over, I think I'm ready to take a shot. As I reflect on my childhood, I am reminded of all the ways this community has become a part of me. I remember the first time I held the flame of our faith and lit our chalice. I remember writing wishes on ribbons, hearing my voice among many in our hymns, feeling like Alice in Wonderland exploring our grove and the not-so-secret maze. <laughs> like that rose fed my tree, this community has nourished me much the same. Throughout my years of being a member of this dear community, I have been shown so much love and action, so much joy shared with all who want it, and so much beauty made from our connection to each other and the earth. As I stand on the precipice of a new journey, I hope that I have become someone you can be proud of. I know that wherever I go, I carry your love in my bones. Thank you. Annabelle, do you, do you know what's next for you? Yes, I do. I will also be attending Portland State University. Go Vikings. All right, Vikings. <laughs> um, and I will be studying English with the hope of one day pursuing library science. I mean, it w I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to honor Annabelle's particular celebrity at this moment as she pursues a career in library science and has been, has been before her viral video, actively combating the book bans in her school district in numerous meetings with numerous administrators. And you, you've been hiding if you haven't now seen the video of Annabelle handing her superintendent a copy of The Handmaid's Tale, which was banned from her school district and her school in particular. <laughs> and if you haven't seen the video on the 208 on KTVB, it's a beautiful interview and where Annabelle really goes into some depth about why this was particularly important to her. And I told her that this morning, I woke up to no less than five of my colleagues reposting her video on Facebook. It is, my mother sent it to me yesterday. I texted back, I know. <laughs> and we were talking this morning and reflecting that if you, what, if you haven't seen the video, the superintendent refused to take the book from her. So she just sort of dropped it at his feet. And if he'd just taken the book, this, my whole thing might not ever have happened, but he had to, you know, 
have a little attitude about his, some graduate handing him a book, uh, what are the chances that he reads it? <laughs> you think secretly he's going to flip through it? Very slim, I imagine. <laughs> Read fun books. Love you all. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Annabelle, for representing those values that you so beautifully spoke on behalf of all of us. And I hope that you know that we are fighting with you and fighting for you and cheering you on every step of the way. So don't ever stop. And that goes for all of our graduates. We are cheering you on every step of the way, fighting with you, fighting for you, fighting for all of our rights, and don't ever stop. And know, my dear graduates, that wherever you are in life, regardless of whether or not you ever go back to a Unitarian Universalist church, know that those are your people. And when you are in a moment and you're having a hard time, you can walk into any Unitarian Universalist church and they will take care of you, and they will help you. So never forget that. And you don't have to have been a member, and you don't have to have done anything or shown up to church. You can just tell them that you were raised in a church, and they will help you. Graduates, you have shared so many gifts with us throughout the years, making forts in the outdoor sanctuary grove and craft projects that adorn our campus, solstice services, and of course, our trip to Boston. There you all are. Living in a house with 12 humans is no easy task. Do you remember when Peter locked himself in his bedroom and we all went to dinner without him? <laughs> and then I think Matthew had to like take the whole lock door handle off thing. Anyway, uh, I loved our Freedom Trail antics and eating cannoli at Mike's Pastry. That does say, leave the gun, take the cannoli. <laughs> For those of you, you know, if you know, you know. I loved watching with all of you, uh, I think particularly uh, with you three, with Sasha and Annabelle and Ronnie, the Boston Pride Parade, which when you are from Boise, Idaho, is like nothing you have ever seen. <laughs> And it goes on and on for hours, and it was just sheer joy and delight for five hours. And of course, ringing the bells at Arlington Street Church. Every uh, group got to have a chance to play a, a song that rang out through the Boston Commons. And then, and then of course, our beautiful, uh, wonderful guide uh, played Baby Shark for us on the bells, remember? <laughs> Baby Shark was an anthem of that particular Boston group at that time. So many good memories, and I'm so glad I got to share them with you. You remind us of our faith's investment in hope, in building the world we dream about, in deep joy and love. And I know that each of you have experienced your own hardships and challenges in life that have flattened you, but also shaped you into the amazing humans you have become. And as we are all witnessing together, those challenges are far from over. Our hope for you is that your years here at Booth serve as a touchstone, as an anchor for you as you venture forth into this unknown world, bringing with you the moments filled with community, asking the big questions, sharing in the search for answers, walking side by side with folks of all ages who have built Unitarian Universalism in this place we call home. After our service and then fire drill today, you are all invited to join us at the Little Bridge for our ritual of crossing the bridge. So many congregations do a ritual of crossing the bridge to symbolize that crossing of a threshold. We're just very lucky that we have an actual bridge here. So we do it at the actual bridge. And the bridging ritual recognizes your transition into adulthood, but it's also a ritual for all of us, a chance to honor and recognize the many transitions in your lives and in the life of this community. But before we do that, we want to offer you a particular ritual of blessing. So I want to invite you both back up here with me, please.
that's for Sasha. <laughs> and let's see, I'll hold one for Juniper here. So, Annabelle, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that child dedication and that white rose uh, in your reflection, because today we're presenting you with a rose, the same flower that we use in our child dedication ceremonies, but this time it's a little bit different. We're presenting you with a rainbow rose to symbolize the rainbow faith that will always be part of who you are and as a reminder of our collective commitment to the values of diversity, inherent worth, compassion, and all of our principles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> your roses also have the thorns left on. We remove them when you're babies. And we leave them on for you now to just remind you that life can be thorny sometimes. And that you get nicked sometimes. But even in those moments, as with the rose, there is still great beauty to be found. And we humans need all the reminders we can get to never forget the beauty in our lives and in the world. As you are now keepers of your own destiny, I invite you to take this rose and touch it to your brow, to your lips, and to your hands as a blessing and dedication of your thoughts, your words, and your deeds, and as a reminder that this congregation will continue to support you on your path. May you serve the ideals of love and beauty and you may, may you pursue truth and justice forever and walk in peace. Friends, if you will continue to support these extraordinary adults in the continuation of their life's journey and commitment to our Unitarian Universalist values, please say, we will. We will. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Jem up, who's going to offer a prayer and blessing. We wish for you a storm or two that you may enjoy the calm. We wish for you tranquility in time of trial. We wish for you a cool breeze on a warm day and pale white clouds that you may better appreciate the blueness of the sky. We wish for you darkness that you may see the stars. We wish you anticipation of a high adventure, and we wish you the courage to avoid battle. We wish you a sense of wonder and poetry and music. We wish you companionship that you may appreciate solitude. We wish you a friend who will understand you and understanding so that you may have a friend. We wish you may become all that you wish to be and more than you hope that you can be. We wish you a flower to smell, a hand to touch, a voice to cheer, a heart to gladden. And we wish you someone to love as we love you. Amen. You may be seated. Your mom is watching. Come on up. I have a quick uh, announcement. This did not make it to our attribution slide, but I got to a point where I realized both of our regular accompanists, Sue and Liza, were traveling and we were without a pianist. So I just want to acknowledge, there she is, Linda Gilbert. Thank you so much for stepping in at the last minute. Thank you. 
flowers that you have brought with you today, these flowers that represent each and every one of us and all of the beautiful diversity and variety we bring to this congregation also represent something of what we carry with us into this space, the joys and the sorrows and the milestones of our life. And it is through our sharing of those joys and sorrows with one another that we strengthen those deep bonds of connection. Today we share these joys and sorrows with you, the delight and joy at the announcement of the engagement of Deborah Smith and Clay Lyons. <laughs> We will be delighted to celebrate your wedding when the time comes. Another deep joy in celebrating 50 years of marriage, Laurel and Lauren Case chair. The Sherman family would like to thank all who have supported Hallie and her boyfriend, Mo Jabril, who lost his younger brother in a tragic automobile accident last Tuesday, uh, Tuesday May 21st. And Matthew Sabin shares uh, joy or concern, he's not sure, but the share that he lost his job in May and is taking some time to figure out what he wants to do when he grows up. If you are holding someone in your heart this morning, I invite you to speak their name aloud into this community of love that we might hold them with you. May the arms of this community hold all our joys and sorrows. Those spoken aloud and those that remain silent and close to our hearts. May we feel the grace in the room and be surrounded by the spirit of life and love with a warmth to celebrate the joys and a gentleness to soothe our aching hearts. Breathe with me. Fill your body with breath. Breathe into this sacred space. Breathe with this beloved community filled with loving kindness. Breathe with wholeheartedness. Listen to what is calling you in the silence. Blessed be. When we give, we say yes to the natural cycle of abundance in our lives, and we say yes to building beloved communities within and beyond our walls. We commit ourselves to do work for justice and compassion for all people and our earth. Today, we share those gifts with our plate partner, Jesse Tree of Idaho, as an expression of that commitment and living out our faith in the world. I invite the ushers to come forward and our offering will be gratefully received.
I'd like to invite our ushers to bring our offering gifts forward and invite all of you to join together in our collective blessing of our offering this morning. We bless these gifts so freely given. May generosity always be our companion as we walk the holy path toward ever greater compassion and beauty. Thank you. The story of our flower communion ritual is a really powerful testament to the beauty of being part of a diverse, non-creedal faith tradition where we get to decide our spiritual path for ourselves and pursue our search for truth and meaning, but do it together in a community, a community of welcome, holding love at the center. We honor our history of speaking truth to power, of living our values of freedom and justice so fiercely, even when it might be dangerous, even when you get ignored. The ritual is an affirmation of our continuity with the generations of struggle for ever widening liberty and freedom. Just like Norbert and Maya Chopik did with their congregation in Prague, in a moment you will be invited to come to the altar and choose a flower other than the one that you brought with you. So think for a moment and remember that you are choosing a flower of someone in this community, someone who shares this journey with you. <coughs> so let us join in our flower communion ritual together.
friends, I invite you and your flowers to join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation with this prayer from Reverend Chopek. Spirit of life and love, all human beings are created in the name of joy and happiness. But thousands of troubles surround us, tormenting us with sadness. If a person cannot see beauty in the world around them, then troubles and sadness tie them down. The beauty of the clouds floating in the sky, the beauty of the spring rain, the beauty of flowers, the beauty of friendship and community. May we see that beauty. May true humanity spread out in human hearts. May we all get our daily bread May we forgive each other and our trespasses and not bring each other into temptation through hatred. May peace spread out across all the earth. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn. I love you all. But Bridgers, I want to invite our Bridgers up front with me, Annabelle and Ronnie and June, to, to sing together. We have hymnals for you, but also to experience being sung to this beautiful hymn that is such a favorite. Come on up, Bridgers. I invite you to place a hand or two, however you want to do it, over your heart for our closing blessing. This community of kindred 
pilgrim souls making our way together. May we always remember the rainbow is calling us toward beauty, toward joy, toward wonder, toward curiosity, toward peace. Let go of all that keeps you hidden from yourself. Walk toward the rainbow, dance toward love, and when in doubt, turn to wonder. Blessed are we all, go in peace.